Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here in Louisville, Kentucky, St. Stephen Baptist Church with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with the master. Thank you for joining us as we continue to explore this theme we've been on all week. And that is God orders our steps and God, God does order our steps. We're told in Psalm 37, verse 23, we are told that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And that word order literally means to set things up. And God sets things up for us. But while God orders our steps, we have to move our feet. I want to give you an example of how this took place uh, when Peter, the apostle Peter, was rescued from death row. There was a king named Herod who wanted to kill Peter, but the church was praying for Peter for his deliverance. Prayers went up and an angel came down. God sent a miracle to, uh, through an angel to deliver Peter from death row. And what's interesting that Peter was guarded by 16 guards in a dungeon, but God's going to order his steps or set things up for Peter to get off death row. But as we shall see, God's going to set things up, but notice Peter's got to move his feet because if God sets it up and he doesn't move his feet, well, Peter's going to be executed. He's going to be, his, his head is going to be severed from his body. So see if this whole principle of God ordering my steps, me uh, moving my feet is true. And it's true in every situation in which there's a miracle. If there's a miracle in the Bible, you always find God ordering someone's steps or setting things up, but then the person had to do something also. They had to do their part. They had to move their feet. Notice what it says in verse 6. Acts chapter 12, verse 6 says, The night before, Herod was going to bring him out to the people, and that's to bring him out to be executed. Peter was sleeping between two guards, and that's a miracle because Peter's asleep on the eve of his execution. He's got what's called the peace of God that passes all understanding. God gives us peace in some very troubling circumstances. And Peter has it because he's asleep. Now, the church has been praying. Peter doesn't know that the church is praying. But we read that the church was praying. The prayers went up. And notice uh, that an angel is going to come down. Now, Peter is sleeping between two guards. And he was tied with two chains and there were guards on duty at the prison, a total of 16 guards, by the way. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord stood there and a light shone in the city, in the, excuse me, a, and a light shone in the cell. The angel shook Peter by the shoulder, woke him up, said, Harry, get up. At once the chains fell off Peter's hands. Then the angel said, tighten your belt and put on your sandals. In those days, they were what's long flowing garments. And they would have a belt and they would pull up their belt or their garment and tuck it away underneath the belt so that they could walk or run. So it says, tighten your belt, put on your sandals, put on your shoes. Now, if if somebody says tighten your belt, which means lift up your garment, put it in your belt, put on your shoes, what is that an indication of? That's an indication that you're getting ready. I'm getting ready to call upon you to move your feet. And here's where we, we read Peter doing his part. Peter did so, which means after the angel comes, and Peter takes his garment, puts it in his belt, puts on his shoes. Peter did so. And the angel said, put your cloak around you and come with me. So he puts on the cloak around his shoulders and said, come with me. Peter followed him. What does that mean? Peter moved his feet. Peter followed him out of the prison. And God wants you. God wants you to move your feet out of some imprisoning circumstances that he's going to help you get out of. 
Peter followed him out of the prison, not knowing, however, if what the angel was doing was real. Peter thought he was dreaming. He thought he was seeing a vision, but he still walked in obedience. They passed by the first guard station. Now, don't forget, he's, he's got two guards on both of his wrists. And he's able to get past the guards on his wrist undetected, then pass by the first guard station and then the second guard station. And then they come to a, an iron gate that opens into the city. Now, many of us would have stayed in the cell because we were going to, we want to figure out now, how am I going to get, going to get past these guards and how am I going to get past these iron gates? But remember, I told you several days ago that God is not obligated to tell you how he's going to do step two if you're not faithful to do step one. If you do step one, step two will, will come in its own time and then step three will come in its own time. He gets past one thing, one set of guards, another set of guards, another set of guards. When he gets to the iron gate, the iron gate opens and on its own. So verse 10 again says they passed the first guard station, the second guard came to the iron gate that opens into the city. The gate opened for them by itself. And they went out, they walked down a street and suddenly the angel left Peter. Why did the angel leave Peter? The angel left Peter because God only sent the angel when Peter was in a situation that he could not get out of on his own. God does not waste miracles. God, God's not gonna do for you what God has enabled you to do for yourself. He doesn't need the angel because he's no longer chained up. He doesn't have an iron gate in front of him. God's only going to send a special miracle in a special situation. And then it says in verse 11, then Peter realized what he had happened to him and said, now I know that it is really true. The Lord sent an angel to rescue me from Herod's power and from everything the Jewish people expected to happen. And God did send an angel and God delivered Peter, but only because Peter was willing to move his feet. He was willing to move his feet. Without God, Peter could not. Without Peter, God would not. And you can take Peter's name out of there and put your name in there. Without God, Kevin cannot. But without Kevin, God will not. And in this scripture, you see what we mean when we say in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, what Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 9, for we are co-workers. Co-workers means partnership. And in this story, God does something and Peter does something. They're co-workers. Let's look at, look at what God did that only God can do. God sent an angel. That's God's part. Peter's chains fell off. That's God's part. Only God can do that. There's a light in the prison that comes on. Some light. God provides the light. God allows the chain to fall off. God allowed Peter to get past the guards undetected, even the guards that were guarding him on his left and his right. That's God's part. And when they got to the iron gate, that should have closed Peter in. Guess what happened? The iron gate opened up. So you, I can list the things God did, but God had something for Peter to do. First of all, Peter was asleep and Peter had to wake up. That's Peter's part. And then Peter had to put on his shoes. That's Peter's part. Then Peter had to put on the cloak around him and take his, his robe and tuck it into his belt. That's Peter's part. And then Peter, once the chains fell off and they had a light to show the way out, Peter had to walk. God ordered Peter's steps, but Peter had to move his feet. And that is true with everybody in the Bible that's got a miracle. Peter, you can walk on water. I'm going to set you up, but you got to get out of the boat. You got to move your feet. Children of Israel, you can get past the Red Sea. I'm going to set it up, but you got to move your feet. 
Every miracle that's ever taken place has been divine human partnership. Okay, Lazarus can come forth. I'm gonna set it up so Lazarus, who's been dead for four days, can get up. But I want you to move your feet and pull back the stone and unloose Lazarus. Everybody, okay, I'm gonna feed 5,000. I'm gonna set you up. But you gotta move your feet and go get the last lunch that has two fish and five loaves of bread. And you got to turn around and you got to go and feed the people which means that God's going to set you up, but you can't be lazy. It's miracles and muscles. You got to use your muscles to do your part and move your feet. We should never minimize the role God plays. Maximize that. But don't underestimate the role that we play as cooperating with God. I almost heard about a man who purchased a farm it was a dilapidated place. Barn uh, was falling down. The ground was hard with weeds, but he worked, fixed that barn, fixed the house on the barn, repaired the pump, plowed the ground, worked for months and months and months to fix up the farm, put a fence around the farm. And it was a showcase. One of his neighbors uh, approached him and said, Look at what God has done in developing this farm, minimizing the role the man had played through hard work. Look at what God has done. And the man said, well, you know what? You should have seen this place when God had it by himself. Because when God had it by himself, there was no plowed ground. There was no fence around the farm. There was no uh, 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 repaired barn. It was only when the man worked with God that he had a farm. Now, God had a role to play because it was God's dirt. God's rain helped the crops grow. God's nutrients were in the ground. God did that. God made that. It was God's sunshine, God's photosynthesis. God did that. That's God's part. But the man had a role to play, and that was to move his feet. And whenever you ask God for anything, always say, No, God, this is what I'm willing to do as I cooperate with you. Many people think that when people get blessed, they just sit back and do nothing. God feeds the birds, but he does not drop worms in their nest. In fact, God provides the material for the birds to build their nests. But the birds just don't sit up on a, on a limb saying, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. No, the bird believes that God has ordered, set them up to go get the material for their, for their nest. And they believe that God has done it and they move their feet, fly, get the material, the mud, whatever they need to build their nest, puts it up, in a, up on a limb high and elevated, gets that nest built, believing that God has provided worms and they go out and get those worms. They move their feet because God doesn't drop the worms in the nest. And God's not gonna drop any worms in your nest. God's gonna give you a vision to do something you've never done before, to have something you've never had before, to reach for something you've never reached before. God's gonna give you some strong, compelling vision. And then once God gives you the vision, God's gonna turn around and set you up and order your steps and put people in your life to help make it happen. But once God has set you up, then you begin to move your feet in faith, step by step and see if God will sustain you, keep you, and when you get to where God wants you to be, you'll look back over it and say, oh, my God, thank you for ordering my steps. And then you'll hear the Holy Ghost speaking to your heart, saying, well, congratulations. I did order your steps, but congratulations, because you moved your feet. Now, as we close this week, is your, is your, are your feet supposed to be moving? Is there something God has put in your heart to do? 
do it. Don't wait until it's too late and look back with a whole lot of woulda, coulda, shouldas. Do it. The Bible says whatever thy hands has been called to do, do it with all thy might because there is no work in the grave. This is not a dress rehearsal. This is the real thing. You don't get a second chance to be 20 again, or 30 again, or 40 again, or 50 again. So when God has set you up in your 20s or 30s or 50s with something to do, move your feet, trust God, let God provide a light for you, cause chains to fall off for you, to get you out of a situation undetected. And when the iron gate is there to prevent you from moving forward, God will open that iron gate. And once the iron gate is open, you move your feet to the destiny that God has ordained for you. I hope you will write this down forever. Order my steps with your word, dear Lord. Lead me, guide me every day. And God's going to sing back to you. Move your feet. Would you move your feet? Move your feet. Won't you move your feet? I've already opened the door for you. Won't you move your feet? Won't you move your feet? Move your feet. You didn't know I could sing, did you? <laughs> well, God ordered that, and I just started moving my mouth and singing. And you do the same thing. Let's pray together. <laughs> Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your word, and thank you for giving us what we always need and for challenging us and sometimes making us feel a little bit uncomfortable with ourselves, which is okay. But help us to move our feet as you order our steps. And thank you for this week and all the lessons we've learned from Peter who only got a command to come, but yet he got out of the boat and started walking on water. Thank you for how you opened the door, a door for Moses at the Red Sea. He didn't know that there was a pathway out, but you did it. And you're gonna do the same for us because you love us. Thank you, Lord, for this day and in just a few days, Thank you will be in the March and spring is going to come. Help this year to be our best year and to do some things that we've been putting off that we know we need to do. And we'll be careful to give you the praise in Jesus name, amen. Thank you for joining me today and this week with another powerful point to ponder. And uh, of course, this is Saturday. Tomorrow is the Lord's Day. And I want you to join me tomorrow when we continue uh, our sermon. We started last Sunday on power and ye shall receive power. So join us in church tomorrow. It begins at uh, nine o'clock with the wonderful and very gifted Miss Crystal Goodner Spratt. And then I'll have a word I'd like to share with you as our worship team blesses us in music. Uh, and then also remember, if you don't have a church home, we'd like to encourage you to become a part of the St. Stephen Church. Uh, just contact us here at St. Stephen Church, uh, New Start SSC Live dot org, New Start at SSC Live dot org. Well, brothers and sisters, God's blessings and peace be upon you. Thank you for being with me this entire week. And as we close, you know what I'm going to say during COVID-19. Don't forget to stay safe, stay sane, and if you can, stay home. Love you much. Peace and blessings. I will see you in church tomorrow.